Hey guys, it's Alex C with TFP TV, and for today's top five, we're going to take a look at the top five best battle rifles. For the purpose of this list, a battle rifle is going to be a military service rifle firing a full power cartridge. Uh, generally select fire as well. We're limiting this list to select fire rifles or rifles that came from the factory with select fire capabilities, but we're going to first start out with the SIG AMT. Actually, this is a variant of the uh, STG 57 or SIG 510. Very cool rifles. We've done a review. They've got that wonderful beer keg charging handle that you'll find on uh, K11s, K31s, and things like that. These are just really cool rifles. They've got some great features. They're roller delay blowback, but one of my favorite things they have is this winter trigger that comes down in case you're wearing big, heavy winter gloves in Switzerland, as this is a Swiss gun. It's also got an integral bipod that folds out and stores over the barrel, uh, barrel jacket, I should say. Very well thought out feature. A great way to store a bipod. Um, very creative. The Swiss are... Uh, <laughs> are pretty crafty when it comes to things like this, but the reason this is one of my favorites is they just shoot great. They have a low recoil impulse. They're very, very accurate. We actually did a, um, like I said, a full review on this rifle, and I was so blown away by the accuracy with run-of-the-mill ammo at 100 yards, it, it grouped about an inch with iron sights the first time I had ever shot this for accuracy on the first day we took it out. These are just, just a pleasure to shoot. I like them. They are not the most handsome rifles. Most people find them pretty ugly myself included, but I guess when it comes to firearms, um, aesthetics come second to function, and these just function great. I wish they were more prolific in the United States. There are some here, uh, notably PE57s and AMTs, um, but they are quite rare, and they're not imported anymore. So if you see one for a good price, pick it up. But the next rifle on the list is going to be somewhat controversial. This is the M14. Uh, the M14 has a storied past. It only served the United States as a main battle rifle for about five years, I believe. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not a good rifle. Um, you know, they're, they're very interesting. They share a lot of features with the very venerable, uh, well-liked M1 Garand, but they ha are more modern. They're, of course, select fire. They uh, have a very similar manual of arms to the Garand, including the safety that everybody loves. Uh, the Operat is very easy to operate and charge. You'll notice the rotating bolt is almost a direct carryover from the M1 rifle as well. Um, it is an improved version, I would say. The the Oprod, for example, in lieu of a cam track, actually has a little roller bearing, which is nice. Um, the selector switch is located on the back. By the way, this is an M1A. I just put a GI stock in and a dummy selector to, to look cool. But magazines come out. They hold 20 rounds of 762 by 51. On full auto, these things are pretty beastly. The pivot point is right at your wrist, so it's best to go ahead and keep that on semi. But uh, one thing I do like is it's got this wonderful shoulder thing that goes up that makes the rifle deadlier. Of course, I'm kidding. It's just to rest the rifle if you're uh, holding the rifle for a long time. The sights are great. If you like M1 Grand sights, you'll feel right at home behind an M14 or an M1A. Um, one of my favorite sets of sights, actually, in all of uh, the firearm world. Um, aside from that, the M1A, I think, is an aesthetically handsome rifle. But, um, of course, like I said, aesthetics come second to function. These are very accurate when bedded properly. You'll see these at matches. Um, the old joke being, though, that you need three one to shoot, one with the bedding messed up, and one at the gunsmith getting the bedding repaired. So next up, we've got the most modern one on the list. That's going to be a SCAR-17. This is actually a semi-automatic SCAR-17S. Unfortunately, I cannot get my mitts on a fully automatic version because they were unfortunately made after 1986, where the cutoff is for fully automatic firearms. But the semi-automatic version is still very, very cool. I think they look just radical. Um, very good-looking firearms, handsome firearms. The best thing about these, I think, is the manual of arms. If you've shot an AR-15 and you feel at home on an AR, then you will really like this. The position of the safety, the way the magazine releases, the bolt catch, all of that is fantastic. I also like that the stock folds and stows great. You can shoot it with the stock folded, um, which comes in handy if you're a vehicle crewman or something like that. Um, it's also got an adjustable cheek riser if you're running an optic, which is very nice. I also do like that the front side on the gas block folds forward and stows very nice and naturally. Of course, they come from the factory with a very nice and effective muzzle brake. Now, one thing I don't like is the reciprocating charging handle. It's got quite a slapper on there, and I put an aftermarket one to run an ACOG. Now, these do weigh an impressive 8 pounds, 6.2 ounces, or in metric, 3.806 3 kilograms. So, all in all, all these features, combined with just excellent shootability, make the SCAR-17 a very great candidate for one of the top five battle rifles, and that's why it made the list. So next up is definitely a crowd favorite, and that's going to be the FN Fusil Automatique Léger, or FAL rifle. The FAL is a rifle that is loved by many. They called it the right arm of the free world for a good reason. Pretty much every NATO member, sans a few, including us stubborn people in the United States, adopted the FAL in one form or another. 
They're great looking, they're very reliable, 762 by 51 the manual of arms is excellent, and they're very easy to maintain, which is my favorite part of the rifle. Like I said, the manual of arms is great. Magazines flip out by extending your uh, pointer finger, and then they rock out and rock in naturally. The charging handle is on the left side of the gun, which is great and optimal. And of course, they do have a bolt catch and a bolt release, which is nice. Aside from that, on full auto, they're a little difficult to control. Um, it's noteworthy that the British military adopted these as the SLR rifle, self-loading rifle. Um, but they eliminated the full auto capability. They left the safety sear in there, which is interesting, but they did away with the setting for full auto. Um, maybe a good choice. Having shot these on full auto, I can tell you that it's really not a whole lot of help. Semi-automatic is where these shine. But I did mention ease of maintenance. You can see the rifle fully field stripped for cleaning here. There's just a few parts. Take the parts down, wipe them down, clean the bore, throw them back in, and you're ready to go. It's easy to see why this rifle was so well loved by the men who carried it. And I'm actually very happy that I have one. I would recommend that if you find a good deal on one, go ahead and grab one up. But lastly, we've got the Heckler & Koch G3. This is actually a PTR-91, by the way, but uh, hey, it's pretty close, I guess. <laughs> but uh, these are just pretty cool rifles. I really like them. There's a great debate, I guess, on what's better, the G3 or the FAL. Maybe put in the comments which one you prefer. But these are roller-delayed blowback. Um, the Manual of Arms is a little different compared to some other rifles on the list. It does have the selector here. with This is an SEF trigger group, which stands for Safe, Economical, and Fun. I'm actually kidding, but uh, on the F setting, these are actually very, very easy to control on full auto. That roller delay blowback action makes it very rhythmic and easy to control for me personally, and I very much enjoy shooting them. Um, normally, they have a paddle like an MP5 to release the magazine. However, being th as this is a civilian PTR-91, you do have to press the magazine release button. Not that big a deal, but like I said, at the heart of the system is the wonderful HK roller delayed blowback or a system that was... Invented in World War II with the STG-45 um, and then perfected it set me. But this is another very easy gun to maintain. You can see here it fully field stripped for cleaning. And ease of maintenance is one of the reasons why this rifle is very close to my heart. Um, it's easy to clean, easy to maintain. As long as you check your, check your bolt gap and leave it in spec, it'll serve you for a very long time. Anyways, guys, that about sums up my list for the top five best battle rifles. We'd like to thank you for watching. We'd like to thank Ventura Munitions. And if there's a rifle that you think should have made the list, go ahead and list it in the comments. See you next time.